Hey friends, it's Christy Gets Crafty here, and I'm so excited to be back with you on the Lawn Fawn YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Scent with Love and the Scent with Love add-on. So I've stamped my images out with jet black ink on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock, and I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers. The first combo that I'm using is T3, T5, and T7. I really like this combo for skunks because it's a between warm and cool, which I think looks really nice and natural on critters. And it's also dark without looking too dark so that you lose their features, but I think it still reads as black. So I'm using that T7 first to lay in his shadows wherever I think they should go, like on the underside of his arms and on the back sides of his legs and the underside of his tail. But what I'm doing different on this guy is that I'm giving him a black top of his head rather than doing the white stripe, which will match the tail. I'm gonna leave his face to be white instead, just to show you guys two different looks. And you know, you guys can decide from there if you prefer one or the other, or if you like to mix and match like I'm gonna do today. So I used the T5 as my mid-tone and then blended that out with the T3. And then I am going to go in with my colorless blender. I got a little bit out of the lines. So I'll just use that to push back that T3 and give me that white cardstock once again. And also to bridge that gap right on his neck where we're going up into the white part of his face. And then I'm gonna move on to my girl skunk. And for her, I'm going to leave the top of her head to be the white stripe, which is going to match the white stripe on her tail. You could also color her ears to be black if you wanted to have that contrast there, but I decided to leave them white for today. So once again, I laid in those shadows with the T7, and now I'm coming in with the T5, and just making sure to catch the edge of that darkest color and pull it into the mid-tone so that I get a really nice and smooth blend, and I don't leave any harsh lines behind. And then I'll go to my T3 and use that to fill in all the rest of the black parts of her body. And then once I finish them both up, I will go back and do a second layer on both of them. Just increases that saturation and smooths things out even more. But I did it off camera today to save time in the video. Then I'm gonna move on to the white parts. And instead of going with another gray or just a lighter of the same gray combo, I decided to warm up the white places using E40 and E41. So I'm starting with that E41 and just casting a little shadow like under their chins and on the base and the end of the tail where it's kind of curved and a little bit toward the back of the head. And then I'm going to blend that out with the E40, but I'm leaving quite a bit of white space because I still want it to read as white, not brown. I just want to warm it up a bit with those shadows. And then I did grab my colorless blender once again to just smooth the transition into that white space and make everything a little bit more seamless. And then I'm going to use these same shades to color in the little, um, like stinky marks. I don't know what you want to call those, but uh, yeah, I just did the same exact with lift a little bit of white space on there. And then I wanted them to have some rosy cheeks and also color in their noses and ears. So I used R11 and R20 for that. Um, just a little bit of both of those shades on the ears, just the R20 for the nose, and then again, both shades for their rosy cheeks. And then I also use these shades for the little trio of hearts over on the right hand side. I knew I wanted a heart that was going to be kind of above them in the final scene, but I didn't know if I wanted like the little stinky heart or the trio of hearts. So I just colored both and decided to wait and see how they looked on the card and decide then. So I'm moving on to my little roses 
and I used the same R11 and R20, but I added in R22 to just give them a little extra pop with that darker shade. So I used the R22 for the shadows, blended out with the R20, and left just a sliver on that front petal for the lightest shade, the R11. I wanted to darken up that combo even further, so I took away the R11 this time and added in the R24, and I'm going to use those to color in my strawberry. Again, I just left a little space for the highlight at the very top, and then I'm also going to do the ribbon that is tying the little bouquet together, um, just starting with that R24. I'm actually going to use that to color in the little bow tie and hair bow as well. I'm going to have a few different red accessories. So I started with the R24 and then blended out with the R22. And I'll leave just a touch of space on the outer edges of the bows for the R20 so they can all have a nice little highlight. And then I decided to do the little box of chocolates, the heart-shaped box of chocolates with this combo as well. So I just went back to my R24. I used that along the sides of the box where they wouldn't have as much light cast there. They would be in more shadow. So I used the darkest shade on that and then brought that up on the sides and also on the other side of the little heart and blended out with the R24 and finished with the R20. Next, I needed to introduce some greens, but I wanted to steer clear of anything that would read too Christmassy since this is definitely Valentine's Day. So I ended up going with YG41 and YG45 for the top of the strawberry and the stems of the roses. And then for the wrapping on the roses, I wanted it to look kind of like a craft colored bag, almost like a butcher paper. So I went with E42, E43, and E44. That E44 is pretty dark, but I wanted some deep shadows toward the bottom and where the paper is kind of flapped over on itself uh, toward the front. So I used the E44 for that. It just didn't take it too far into like the part that would be most highlighted because I wanted to keep that nice and light. And then I blended out with the E43 as the mid-tone, but still left plenty of space for that nice light E42 so that it would kind of look like that butcher paper like I was talking about. And then I wanted to deepen up this combo for the chocolate on the chocolate dipped strawberry. So I took away the E42 and added in the E47. So everything is very matchy, but still has like its own shades. And then I didn't want to introduce like a whole new color for the ribbon on the box. So I decided to do a nice satiny brown uh, ribbon just to represent the chocolate inside. So I used those same shades, just put the darkest in the center of that bow and on the corners of the ribbon where it wraps around the box and blended from darkest to lightest. And then I trimmed all of these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I took the Quilted Heart backdrop in the portrait orientation and die cut that out of some speckled eggshell cardstock. So that left me with all of these cute little hearts die cut out. And then I just took a little tool that kind of gets all those little bits out, ran that over from behind. And that tool is from Spellbinders, but there are a few different ones on the market. And I wanted to let you know that you can save these little heart bits. You can use them as some little accents on your card, or they would be great as shaker card material. Then I took a piece of vellum and die cut that with the second largest of the large stitched circle stackables dies. And that is going to leave me with a beautiful circle with that nice stitching detail on the outer edges. Then I grabbed the giant XOXO die and cut that out of some guava cardstock. I just love this shade, especially for Valentine's Day because it's like a combo between pink and red. I just think it's really pretty. 
Then I grabbed another piece of that speckled eggshell cardstock because I wanted like a two-part sentiment. So I'm gonna stamp in narwhal ink and I'm doing the sentiment that says, you are stinking sweet from the Scent With Love add-on. I stamped that down a couple of times to make sure that I had a really nice impression. And then I'm going to pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using another piece of guava cardstock that I have scored and folded to an A2 standard size card. So it's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall with a top fold. And I'm going to stamp on the inside using guava ink. So that is the ink to match. I will stamp down several times knowing that this ink does dry back a bit to make sure that I get a really vivid impression once that happens. And then I'm ready to start assembling. So I'm going to grab the glue tube and add that all over the back of my quilted heart backdrop. I wanna make sure that this is securely glued down. So on the four edges, I'm gonna go in between each of those little hearts and also make sure that I have some glue on all four corners. I like this one because it has that fine nozzle so I can get in all those spaces. And then I'm gonna select a few little spots here and there in between. I'm not gonna go between every heart, but just a few here and there to make sure that that card base, or the card front rather, will be secured down well. But I don't wanna have like too much glue splooging out between those hearts. So that's why the glue tube really comes in handy and then I'm going to hold that down in place until everything is well secured. And I even added a few acrylic blocks on there just to make sure everything was pressed down well. So I die cut that sentiment with one of the everyday sentiment banners and now I am ready to begin adhering all of my little elements to that focal point. Normally I add the focal point to the card first and then add my images over top, but since I'm working on vellum, um, vellum can be tricky to adhere because if you add any glue, it often will show behind it because it is see-through. So this time I'm going to add my elements to that focal panel first, and that way I can add some additional glue behind those elements, and that way all the glue will be hidden when I adhere it to my card front. So I started with that giant XOXO. I wanted that to be down at the bottom of the vellum circle and hanging off of there. And then right above that, I added my banner with my sentiment. And then right above that, I'm going to add my two skunks. And I realize that it looks like they are pretty far apart right now, but I need some room between them for the little elements that they're going to be holding and gifting each other for Valentine's Day. So that's why I placed them on the outer edges of the circle. I'm going to have my little girl skunk holding that box of chocolates, and then the boy will be holding the bouquet of roses. So I'm just kind of um, adding that, and I know that they're gonna overlap in the center, but that's totally fine with me. I kind of think that looks extra cute because it just integrates all the elements into the scene and it really makes it look a little bit more um, natural or realistic. Then the little boy is going to be wearing a bow tie and the little girl will be having a hair bow. So I just added those on there as well. And since he had a free hand, I decided to give him the chocolate covered strawberry because that is what my husband and myself, we always gift each other chocolate covered strawberries. Either he'll buy them or I'll buy them. It doesn't matter. We just check and say, okay, who's getting them this year because we just love chocolate covered strawberries. So I went back and forth between those two heart elements like I mentioned earlier, but ultimately decided to go with the stinky heart. Um, I just thought it went better with the skunk theme and the sentiment and also the fact that it was right over the roses. Um, it could also be a sweet smelling heart. It's just kind of like a fragrance there. So then I can grab my card base and like I said, I can safely add all of my liquid glue behind all of those elements and you won't be able to see any of that glue showing through on the front of the vellum. I just added tiny little dabs behind that heart because I wanted to make sure that the glue didn't splooge out on the edges and 
uh, ruin that clean look of the vellum. And then of course to the bottom of the XOXO. And then I just lined that up on my card front, made sure I had it right where I wanted that, and then pressed that down into place. And I like that you have a few minutes with that glue, or a few seconds rather, to um, adjust things and make sure that it's secured well before everything is adhered down permanently. And then, of course, I had to add some sparkle because, you know, love is magical and all of that. So I put a little bit on my chocolate part of my chocolate covered strawberry. And then also to all of the little bows, the um, bow tie, the bow on the gift, the bow on the chocolate, and also the little hair bow. So all of those. And then I decided to add just a touch to the very right side of each of the roses just to make them stand out a little bit. And then I was looking at that giant XOXO and I thought it might be pretty to add a little bit of glitter there as well. I didn't want to cover the whole thing so I decided to do kind of like a drop shadow. So I'm going to just put it on the left side of the right side of each of the letters if that makes sense. Um, I basically chose it based on where I wanted it on the O's and then figured out where I wanted it on the X's so it would match. So it's on the inner curve of the right side of the O's and then on the inner edge of the right side of the X's and um, just had a little bit too much of that stickles on that first O, so I just wiped that away with my finger. And that's going to finish off my card for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. There's a close-up look at all of that detail and another peek at the inside. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I love chatting with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.